We all know this pose. The crowd noise is deafening, the stadium is rumbling, and the visiting quarterback is just trying to hear his coach. Today, it's just as recognizable as the victory formation or the Cobra surrender. The quarterback helmet radio has paved the way to today's gadget tech fest that we see every Sunday on the sidelines. It's hard to imagine that the NFL had once banned the helmet radios over half a century ago. To explain that, we'll have to flash back to 1956, when legendary coach Paul Brown was coaching the Browns to back-to-back -back championships. Brown was the innovative coach, known for finding any new edge to get a win. He was approached by John Campbell and George Solaris, two inventors and avid Browns fans. Hey, Coach Brown, team looks great this year. Want to be even better? We think we have a way for you to talk to your quarterback on the field. That's a great idea. Come back when you've got something working. And guys, keep this quiet. So John and George go on to secretly build the prototype for a helmet radio receiver. We should test this. The two set up outside the woods behind John's house. George puts on the helmet and walks into the forest. A cop driving hears interference in his own signal and finds George in the woods with a football helmet on. What are you guys? Communists? Russians? Spies? Communist Russian spies? The two spilled the beans on their plan with the Browns. Luckily for them, the cop was a big Browns fan and agreed to keep the plan a secret. Flash forward and it's game day. The quarterback for the Browns was a guy named George Ratterman, and he becomes the first player to use a helmet in a game. The other team gets suspicious of a transmitter device being used on their sideline, and the word gets out. Three games later, citing unfair advantage, Commissioner Burt Bell bans the technology. Now, let's jump to the 90s, through the evolution of the helmet and into the modern game of football. The sport needed a change, and the NFL wanted to speed things up. I think the audience likes clean football before the ball is snapped. The more streamlined you can make the communication before the ball is snapped, the better the product is. I think the game goes faster that way too. Plays are snapped quicker. It came a long way from its genesis in the 50s, but the helmet radio had made it back to the NFL. Instead of using hand signals or running in substitutes, coaches could talk directly to their quarterback. The helmet communicator came into play in 94. Oh, it was so much easier. I mean, the amount of time and energy you previously had to put in to create a signal system, a communication system, it's very time consuming. Yeah, learning how to call play was brutal. When there's a lot of noise and when the guy calling the play isn't decisive, isn't clear. So a lot of times coach will press the button. Yeah, I thought we were going to do that next time. I all across. And you're like, what? I think I got that. And then the really good ones are like, hey, Trent, we're going to go far double wing right. Two jets, X dagger, Y shallow cross. Hey, again, you got me, not your head if you got me. You know, good coaches do it that way. But basic communication wasn't the only complication that needed to be addressed. Like any new technology, there were several problems that teams had to deal with. I remember when I had Warren Moon, and when we first had the system in, and I remember seeing Warren walk into the headset and just swatting at the helmet, kind of like he was swatting bees away from it, like saying, hey, shut up, get out of my head, okay? It wasn't a perfected thing at that time, so sometimes the whole communication system went down. As good as it was, you always may have to have that backup plan. There were times where I had to run to the sideline, get the play coordinator run back. I mean, there were definitely some times where it went crazy. But the other thing that happened early on, believe it or not, was the little speakers were Velcroed kind of behind your ear pad. And if you took a big hit or your helmet got twisted, the speaker would like fall out. The biggest thing is the league did not want to appear that we were playing mad football, so to speak, to where the players were just these automatons that taking direct orders from the sideline like we were playing some kind of video game. Less like a video game? Easy. Put in place some rules. One, only the sideline can talk to the quarterback. The booth up top can't talk to him. Two, the frequency cuts out with 15 seconds left on the play clock. And three, if one team's system goes down, the other team has to shut theirs off too. The defense now has a designated player with a headset too, thanks to Spygate. So now, at all times, you can find two players on the field with a tiny green dot on the back of their helmets. Those green dots and the communication technology can all be attributed to two passionate Browns fans with a wild idea and a legendary coach that gave them a shot. 